75 pins there uh, for 75 clean tests. Do you have a testing moment that like stood out to you? Maybe like something that was super inconvenient or like anything that stands out as like maybe a weird moment from all these USADA tests over the years? Uh, no, really. You know, uh, I'm kind of at this point best friend with the girl that's always go there to do my test. We, we enjoy, every time she go test me or Nina, we have a great talk, you know. She's like kind of friend now. So I never have like a, uh, a bad experience with her. It's pretty cool. Okay, and you've been in the UFC since before this program came around, right? Do you feel like it's accomplished its goal in cleaning up the sport? Do you feel like there's less people using banned substances than there was before you saw it came around? Yes, yeah, definitely. You know, it's very important because I take care of my body, you know, in the right way, natural and everything, and I want to compete with a girl that's the same. So this is very important for, for everybody who can see I'm clean too, you know. And I'm powerful, doesn't mean I need anything else to make me powerful. So I'm clean and I can knock people out like that too. I can prove it. And you had another face off uh, yesterday or today with Irene on the waterfront and stuff. Um, did you see anything different in that stare down with her compared to the one you guys did last month? Uh, no, it's just like see her again, you know, see. Uh, make a couple, couple things for the fans, you can see ours too, like for you guys too. And it's not about us, it's all about you guys. When for you, because you're very respectful towards her, you're obviously a very nice person, but when does the flip switch to you to this person is trying to take this belt away from me and I need to obviously you know, do damage to her in the cage? Uh, when I signed the contract, you know? When I signed the contract, the line modes started, you know? So... And from there, I never stop thinking, like, I, I got to protect my belt, you know? I never going to sleep in, in, in any opponent ever again. And in the last fight, you finally won a title back, right? You haven't done that in a long time. You've just been defending them. Uh, so it's a first defense of the second title reign, right? Like, do you look at this differently than the first reign you had, or does it just feel like a continuation? Yeah, it's a continue. I like to compete, so... Um, be he's just like a blessing to me. I love it, the fight week. I love everything involved to to be a fighter. So it's just competing, competing in my life is driving me forward. And and is that? What is your motivation right now? Because I, you did that interview where you said you'd considered retirement after the first Juliana fight, and I think people kind of freaked out, being like, you know, <laughs> is she one foot out the door, or like, where is she? So can you just maybe, to anyone who has doubts about your mindset or your motivation, uh, explain to them where you are right now mentally? Yeah, you know, like, when you hold the belt for so long and then, and then lost that thing, like, you, you, you get sad. And you don't know what you do, honestly, because you work so hard. I work my whole life for that thing, and then she go away like that with somebody that I know I'm better, you know? And that was hard to, to see, to watch it after, and everything. But, like, for, for a couple moments, I walk, and then, like, I, I was, like, a little confused about the whole thing, you know? But, like, soon I got home, soon, because I drive back, and I take a couple of days to, to, to be at home. And I always think about a lot of things, what I can do, what, what I have to change. You know, I think a lot of things. And then and I, I decided to retire because retire, leave my, my belt with Juliana, no way. No way. No way. Can be with somebody else, but with Juliana, no. So, and I know I can kick her ass, you know, anytime I want. That day was like a day... She, I'm, I'm thinking, like, she's supposed to, like, win that day, you know. I'm supposed to make the mistake that I make to fight without being really in my great shape. And I pay for, and I never is going to do that again, ever, 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 ever. So, yeah, I, like, I was confused a little bit, but, like, soon I got my foot in the floor. I got home, and everything was always ready to go. My mindset was, like, ready to get the belt back and never lose again. So now I'm here. Motivator as a lioness, you know, ready to go through the jungle. My, my spirit is so strong and, and everything else, so I'm ready to go. And I remember you told me a few years ago, like, you wanted to stay in the sport uh, until your children were old enough to, like, fully understand what you're doing here and appreciate 
you know, the greatness. Is that still kind of the goal? Do you feel like there's many years ahead? Or as you kind of said there, you know, would be fine leaving the belt with someone who's not <laughs> Juliana. Is it a fight by fight thing now? You know, yeah, I leave that open, you know, to decide, leave my mind, my, my, my body after each fight from now on. You know, whatever I, I decided to stop is going to be inside the cage. I don't know any time I have that answer in set, you know, when I'm done inside the cage. So uh, I always was in that, in that moment that I always think, like, I have everything that I need and I, I work hard for my belts and everything, but I always felt that I was missing something, you know. Uh, my heart always was empty, and I always try to find what is the love that I need, you know. I, have, I dream with my belts, I have my belts, what I need. So when Reagan's born, I find out that was what I was missing, you know, be a mother. That love that's be able to raise a child is amazing. And I love so much be a mommy that I have another one now coming. <laughs> And just last thing for me, um, <clears throat> Raquel Pennington is actually here as like the backup, right? Do you put any thought into your mind of like if something crazy happens the next couple of days with Irene, like preparing for someone else or a change of opponent? Like, do you put any concentration? No, I don't think anything is gonna happen. It's gonna be a runner. It's gonna we're gonna face me in that night, you know. So um, obviously, Rock is here. You know, I, I think school have somebody else line up, but like, nothing's going to happen. It's going to be all done for sure. Amanda, in the front right here. Um, Irene was in here earlier, and you've essentially been the champion her entire UFC career, and she said she had been studying and preparing to fight you even before you had won the belt. So was she always on your radar as a future opponent even before you fought for the title? I always think about her too, you know? The Lions don't sleep, you know? So um, I was training for her, actually, because I know... I, my supposed to be her, you know? And that me and Nina always think about it because they talk about Juliana, all those things, but like, I always think about like, the Mexican right now have like a good run, you know? They might think about it, put Aldana. So we started training for her right away. And when they, I got a call, it was Juliana. So, but I, I, I was training for Aldana already. When everything changed, at the end, they become be Aldana, I was ready for her already. She said she had thought there would be a moment even before you fought for the title that you guys would probably be matched up even way back then. So were you aware of her back then too? And were you watching her? Uh, she lost. I don't think she was really, she's supposed to, but like her fights no always a fight that like, oh my God, she's the next, you know? I, that's why UFC put somebody else in front of her. If she impress them, for sure we would be able to fight. But I have, she no always impressed back then to face me. But now, not having anybody else, so she's still not impressed. But I'm not sleeping on her, and I like to fight somebody else new, and I like the challenge she brings to me. And front, last question for me. Charles was in here, and he's such a massive star in Brazil. Was there ever a moment in your career that, like, that's what you wanted, like, to be such a mega star in Brazil? No, that never was something that I want. I, I want to be a double champion, you know? Never was a toy in my mind to become stars. I want to... I tell Nina all the time, like, I want to be able to go everywhere, you know, I want to be able to take, I want to be able to be normal and, and chase my, my dream and have my belts and be, actually, my, my life right now is perfect. It's exactly how I want, you know, and, and uh, I'm happy for him, you know, if he, this is what he likes to, to do, this is great for him, but I, I love how, how everything in my life is set up right now. Amanda, back here at the very back. Uh, welcome to Vancouver. Thank you. Um, you talked about your family. You've got both belts again. You've been on a dominant run. Do you feel this is your perfect life that you're living right now? It couldn't get any better? Yeah, definitely. Actually, I just won't have to carry that, you know, on. And, and, and if you have anything else out there I can do, I feel like the life is going to show me, you know, like always. Everything that happened in my career, I, I, I didn't know it was going to happen, you know. The only thing that I know, I'm going to get the belts, you know, the two belts. But anything else, all the records that I break is like, what is the life show me, you know. And, and I was following and get everything done. But, yeah, I carry on like that right now. And I have everything that I need. Have you allowed yourself to process the fact that you're one of the greatest at what you've done? And, and to give an example, when I told my wife that I was coming here today, she was excited.
that I was going to be able to interview today. She's a casual MMA fan, but you, you've transcended the sport where you have people like her excited to watch your success and enjoy your success. Have you figured that out about what you've been able to do? And, and, and does it, has it hit you deep down inside that you had that effect on people? Yeah, I, I, a lot of people come up to me and then tell me exactly what you, you tell me. And, and I think this is cool, you know? This is what I love to hear. And I'd be able to, to be in people's life like that and be able to, to get, get people to watch MMA if they don't are a, a huge fan, but like just because of me, they like me and then they can watch it. I think this is amazing. You know, making me happy it means a lot to me. And I feel like this is one of the things that really drive me forward in this sport as well. To see people that never watch MMA fall in love just because see me fight and see me talk or like me because who I am with everything that I that I that I did in my, in my life, you know, coming from Brazil, from a small city, you know, I don't know, I, a lot of people went go there with me, say like, how people find you here, you know? Back then, now the, the city's a little big, but back then it was like almost nothing. It was more like a jungle, a little city around, so I feel like if I did, I have a lot of little girls out there can do, so that make me happy to hear when I see people tell me those things. You have a wife, you have two, well, second child on the way. To share the journey with them, how much has the journey changed because of that? Um, and is it even more special? Even more special. And change it for better. Every fight week for me before Reagan always was like very hard because I, I stay there in the room sometimes and I don't do anything, you know? Like it was always boring. boring. And I always like, oh, let's, let's go away, let's go do something, let's go here and there. So I always try to fill that, that empty space that I, you know, that I have. And now, see, like, make me laugh. So this is how it is, guys. This is my fight week, you know, with a lot of love and, like, things to do, discipline her, you know, r read a book and do everything like I do at home. So this is making me... The, the fight week enjoyable. Okay, last question. My wife said, okay, when you ask her this, please ask this for me. You're in a beautiful city, one of the most beautiful cities in North America. Do you get to enjoy it with your family? Will you spend a little bit extra time or have you seen some of our family, of, of, of our city with your family? Uh, say it again? Will you enjoy Vancouver? Have you been enjoying our city? That was the question my wife yeah. would ask. Oh, okay, okay. Do, do you get to enjoy the city and have you been enjoying our city? Yeah, we went around a little bit, but like, I'm pretty sure I'm going to stay two more days to do that, you know, my my schedule is pretty busy <laughs> this weekend. But like we went to a couple of restaurants, amazing. The city is beautiful. I went for a good run too, and I was be able to see the combination of the mountains and the water is like unbelievable. So and I just think he's beautiful. This is my second time here, but the first time walk around a little bit, see everything. It's pretty cool. Men over here. Tell your wife I say hi. <laughs> Um, not looking past Saturday night, but is, is it your understanding that Juliana Pena will fight the winner of this, or could it be Raquel Pennington because she's the backup for this fight? Neither. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like either of them, one of them is like is, is right there, you know, to, to fight for the belt. So I'm going to okay. be ready for them. Is it possible Myra Silva, she's fighting Holly Holm. If she gets a win, is there a possibility of her maybe getting a title shot? Because a win over Holly would be pretty big for the division. I don't think so right now. No? No. Okay, fair enough. Um, and uh, uh, Irene's teammate, uh, Alexa Grasso, defeated an opponent that you fought uh, twice, Valentina Shevchenko. Um, were you surprised by that win, or did you feel like Alexa had a chance going into that fight? I don't, I don't know what's surprising, you know. Uh, I, fought, I fought Valentina when she was the, in her prime, you know. Mm. And we both was growing, you know. In, in our bo uh, last fights, we both was growing as a fighter, you know. And, and it's like Valentina have a lot of holes that I, I can see, you know. I, I, w I wasn't be able to do, you know, back then, but I, 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 see, I see how, uh, how um, Alex Grasso would be able to finish her. And then uh, Valentina said a lot of times that she thinks a third fight between the you know, two of you will happen at some point, but with her losing, do you think you'll probably never fight her again? 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Okay. I think I think have a lot of noise in the 135 right now. Mm -hmm. I don't think UFC is going to stop and then go back with that Valentina thing that's no sell nothing, you know? So. Um, and I don't know if you've been asked this before. It's been a while, but Kayla Harrison's coming uh, is coming off a loss. She hasn't fought in a while. I know there was some talk about her fighting you and, and all this. Uh, what advice would you give to her? Because you've had losses before as well, too. Is, is there anything you would say to her about having that first defeat and not being undefeated anymore? She's going to learn it. You know, she's just got here, so she will learn it. Amanda, uh, just, you know, uh, wondering, uh, Irene's had a few weight issues in the past. She's missed 135 a few times. Um, she did it? Yeah, and she's had that. At, at 140 at catchweight a few times as well. Uh, any concerns just with that information that she makes weight on Friday? I, I will fight her, any. I don't have a problem. Not for the belt, though. The belt's going to be a decide save, but, like, I will face her. So you, you will face it, but won't put yeah. the belt on the line. Yeah, that's the truth. I will face Aldana. Gotcha. And, and you mentioned just when you were talking about Juliana Pena and uh, that day where she, she won the belt from you, you were saying anyone but Juliana. Why? Why, why anyone but Juliana that day? What happened? Uh, you mentioned the, you, that day when you lost the belt to Juliana Pena. Like, you, you couldn't stomach the fact that she beat you, but you could have maybe dealt with somebody else beating you. Why, well, I guess, why was it so hard, Juliana specifically beating you? Why, why was that hard to, to stomach or swallow? She's not that good, you know? <laughs> she's not that good. That was hard to swallow, you know? She's crazy. She's like, go forward and then punch, and then like, just being toughy. She have the belt. She, you know, she can get hit. And no, it's like, no way. I knew I'm going to go back then and get that belt again, you know. So it's not no always down the second, the second fight I'm going to get my belt back. So, and I did it. So a uh, 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 trilogy isn't on the table, do you think, in, in the event that you retain and, and she wants to fight you again? Um, like, I, I fight her again, for sure. After this, no problem at all. When you talk to Juliana, does it sometimes, like, annoy you that... <clears throat> You know, you beat her so conclusively in the second fight, but she still says, oh, I, I made you I made you go southpaw. I changed the space striker. Do you sit there and you get frustrated, or what do you think when you hear those things? <laughs> she make me better. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, this is MMA. If she stick with her style, uh, I'm sorry. You're going to be gone soon, you know? I'm, like, evolve all the time, you know? Yeah, I, I, I can strike with my both stand, you know? I can wrestle with you. My wrestle is better than yours, you know? You could stop <laughs> My ground is better than yours. I, if you attack anything, I can defend. You know, I'm strong. So I'm better than you everywhere. You're gone. You're gone. Amanda, to your left. Um, when, this, when, when the fight with Pena was originally announced, uh, it was met with a, somewhat of an eye roll from a lot of fans. And I'm wondering if you felt that too. Like, this is one of the rare times where an injury replacement happens and fans seem more excited for Aldana than they did for Pena. You know, like, it's everything can happen, you know. They, they train, train for a championship fight so intense, especially training for, for, to fight me, you know. And especially, like, how she, she went down a uh, uh, second fight. And when the replace came, I feel like everybody, like, even the fans were always very happy about it. You know, they want to see this fight happen. They, they want to... Go watch here in Vancouver. They want to use main event. So I saw a lot of things, a lot of bad like comment when they closed me and Juliana, and people no one. And so when everything changed, everybody got happy. Right. Does it? Are Are you more motivated? Are you more excited for this fight? I I am. You know, I'm motivated. If it was Juliana too, I would be too. Because uh, the compete is what makes me excited. So no matter what, who you step in front of me, that makes me excited. And last one for me, you talked about Reagan and obviously another child on the way. Are the training camps harder because now you have to be away from your family when you are in camp? No, actually, my gym have a pretty good setup. You know, I make everything to have my family with me if they want. But like Reagan goes to school too, you know. So now she's two and she, it's more easy. To, to do because she know we ties all the time. She's in school. And, but like I make the gym, she have a uh, huge space upstairs to, to play around if she wants. So it's not, it's not a problem at all have my family with me all the time. I make the, the, the way to good for everybody, you know? And training is something that never would never bother me because me and Nina is a team, you know? 
if I cannot handle Reagan in that moment, she can handle. So, and we, we go back and forth like that. Sometimes her dad too help us like stay with Reagan a little bit. He loved to stay with Reagan. Who no love to stay with Reagan? So, and yeah, I know I don't see like myself go away for so long. I always tell UFC like if you guys are gonna take me somewhere, they have to come with me. You know, Reagan because a child like in two in two days, they like change so much. Nina went to, to a Disney with her for two days, and they always stay home to keep training. And then when she come back home, she was speaking like things that I didn't and I never expected. So like, see, imagine in one week I'm I'm far away, you know, like no way. So, and um, yeah, I go everywhere with them. I love to have them around me. And ten years together, me and Nina without go anywhere a part of each other, so we 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 good together. <laughs> we are best friend too. Very cool, thank you. Thank you. Question right here, Amanda? Oh, it's right here. Uh, you were just talking about uh, your you know, gym that you're running now yourself. You're now one and all when running uh, your own camp under your new gym. Just wondering, has there been any challenges or any lessons learned, even though you were victorious in the one fight under, uh, have you learned anything since doing that experience, running your own camp? You know, the challenge, I thought it was gonna be a challenge to put the gym together, you know, because I never did it before. I know I, I was in a lot of gym, and I see how crazy it is to put the gym together, but like when it, things started coming together, I was like surprised. So like, this is meant to be, you know? I supposed to like go on my own like that, I supposed to open my gym, and the space was like, a, a, a blessed space, you know, was a space that I that I was surprised, you know. I always tell Nina, like, I want a, a building that have, like, tall, tall ceilings, all those things. So when we got in the place, it was exactly what I want. And and I put the gym together. And challenging, um, only with the training partner. They want to kick my ass and, and, <laughs> and, and make me better. So I feel like the challenge that I get is for my training partners. You've also mentioned since that you've sort of have a renewed spirit since starting up this new gym. Can you put into words exactly what it is about opening up your new gym that's given you this renowned, uh, sorry, uh, renewed motivation? Yeah, when it's something that's yours, you know, you know who is going in all the time, who is going to train you, who nobody's allowed inside, only you, who you want. When you open, I open the door. Every day of the studio is like it's not only a gym, it's a sanctuary, you know. Have all my my posters in the wall, all the things that's motivating me to to really really move forward and everything. So I feel like that that is what is like really keeping me in my toes, you know. When you'll be able to to really like get comfortable and I, I don't say like as much like scared, but like you want to walk in a in a place and and feel good, you know, feel threat, you know, and you want to have the coach for you, you know. When you become a champion, like you always want your coaches and you want to be with your with your uh, training uh, closely, you know, very closely. When you see your coach train your other girls and the girls. It can be my future opponent that was another level of thoughts, you know. So this guy helped me to become who I am and help another girl to what? To beat me maybe one day, you know. That was like, if you think about it, like, they don't, might not think about that in that way. But as a champion, I see my coach training this girl that's talking about me, that's one of my belt, and they still, like, give some advice to her. If it maybe one day we face it. So you know, think like that little energy she have for my coach would help her to get at these things, you know what I mean? So, but this is one thing is um, of me, you know? A lot of fighters can think different. So when I started get really um, bother me that much, I decided to make some adjustment, you know? It's not, it's like people do whatever they want. But like I do it my my way, I know it's good for me. Amanda, to the right here. Hi. 
<laughs> so Amanda, June is uh, Pride Month in Canada, which celebrates the LGBTQ plus community. Uh, how happy are you to fight on this stage and represent that community during Pride Month? It's pretty cool. I take it that way. Like I'm, I'm like, um, I take it as smooth as possible, and and I feel like I live my life the way I love to. I feel like that is a good way to to put it this out there. You know, I'm not in tune that much. You know, in the community, obviously, but like I, I really uh, I love to be able to represent. You know, as like be myself, be with my family, be happy. You know, live, respect people. People respect me. Uh, a lot of people asking me, like, why you know, be more into the community, all those things, help more. Like, I say, like, you gotta, you gotta respect my position. You know, I do good things, so that is a good way to already help the community to, you know, be respected by others. If I respect people, live in my life, you know, uh, I feel like that is gonna help other people to look up to everybody in a different way. So, and, and, and yeah, I feel like in that way, now stepping the cage in the, in the Pride Month is, is pretty cool. You know, I'm very excited. And, and if I be able to help the way I help, I like to help, I, I, feel, I feel good about it. 